What is up guys, Iron Lord Cacus here. Thank you so much for stopping by and today we are going to be taking a look at the new Forward Path Legendary Kinetic Auto Rifle just added to Destiny 2 Season of Arrivals with the first Iron Banner of this season. This is one of two quote unquote new weapons coming this season to IB. Now these are technically reskins of older Iron Banner weapons that are still in the game you can use the year one versions but considering they're coming with a completely different perk layout and the choice of random perks they're essentially acting as brand new weapons and both of the new weapons on offer have kind of shaken things up they offer some pretty unique things but none more than the forward path yesterday i did a video detailing uh the starting stats perks and all of the god rolls for both of these two weapons but in this video since we finally can get our hands on these weapons we're going to be looking at did they live up to the hype there was a lot of people saying that these weapons could make a big difference in the meta will that actually be the case or are they a little bit underwhelming well let's dive into it now, the forward path that I'm using for the background gameplay, the role I got, includes firstly dynamic sway reduction. This is really the main thing I was going for. It provides a bonus to accuracy and stability as you hold the trigger. And then I also have Eye of the Storm, which makes the weapon become more accurate and boosts handling as your health gets lower. So really, this is like the laser beam wombo combo. If I am dueling someone in a 1v1, oh my goodness. I don't miss and they do start to miss very often. Well, I mean, I still miss, but it's not the gun's fault is the point I'm trying to make. And I think that this is overall a very good role. I would rather have maybe something else instead of Eye of the Storm and maybe a, a more range or stability influencing perk in that second choice for sure instead of Tactical Meg, but still generally the main thing I'm going for dynamic sway reduction is on here. Now, with all that being said, is it actually good in PvP? Well, I think it really is. It feels like a classic 600 RPM auto, and it certainly performs very similarly to a lot of the other great auto rifles within the game. The Gnawing Hunger, the Summoner, the Aether Doctor, etc. They all have actually pretty similar stats generally within a damage archetype. There isn't one thing or another thing that stand out massively for having the best or the worst of a certain stat. They're all pretty darn similar and the forward path is no different. Now, I have heard some negative experiences regarding the main downside of this gun and that is the muzzle flash. And you can see in the background gameplay, and once you kind of notice it, you really start to notice that the muzzle flash is pretty intense. Now for all of the PvP gameplay, I am using uh, the second sight that came with this gun, which is the Red Dot 2 MOA. And I think that really does help with the muzzle flash. It makes the sight a little bit further away from the barrel, like above the barrel. And so the muzzle flash is kind of all happening below where my line of sight is. However, if I switch to a little bit of PvE gameplay, Gameplay right here with a different sight you can see that that muzzle flash in my opinion is a little bit easier to notice with this sight so potentially switching sights is going to have a big influence on this gun's main downside and like muzzle flash it doesn't like technically impact your performance in any way in terms of a statistical difference right it's just the fact that it can get in the way of landing some easy headshots it can confuse you if you have a really bright muzzle flash and the enemy rolls away you can miss that or if they dodge away that you can miss that so it is something that i've heard people complain about again with the site i was using it wasn't as bad as i think some people are making it seem but it's certainly something that you should know about I also ended up getting in a little bit of a debate with a clan member who was saying, well, what's the point of using this gun? The gnawing hunger is just better. And my point was, that doesn't matter. The gnawing hunger could and probably is indeed better than the forward path. But the reason we're not comparing those two weapons is because the gnawing hunger is an energy weapon and this is a kinetic weapon. Almost all other 600 RPM autos are energy. This is actually the only one that's going to be surviving weapon sunsetting in the fall. And that is a huge deal. And I think that people are just totally ignoring this when they're looking at this weapon saying, oh, my gnawing hunger or my summoner is better. What's the point? 
at any point, a new weapon could be added, a new exotic, especially with the fall expansion when we're going to get a huge influx of new weapons. And if there's an absolutely cracked energy special weapon, like an energy shotgun exotic that just warps the meta, and you want to use a 600 RPM auto, this is your only option. The Nong Hunger may be statistically a tiny bit better, but if it means you're missing out on using something that's blatantly overpowered, you are at a huge disadvantage. So just having access to this gun is so important in that respect because it fulfills a very unique category within your loadout. But I think there's something else that a lot of people are overlooking with this weapon, and that is there's a whole nother part of this game outside of PvP. It's called PvE. Just because this weapon is acquired via a PvP activity and it performs quite well in the Crucible and, you know, its archetype is favorable in the Crucible. So many people are playing a couple of Crucible matches, throwing up a video and saying whether this weapon sucks or is amazing, but really, I think it's poised very well to perform excellently in a PvE environment. Those same things I talked about, about it being a kinetic and that being important, that matters in PvE too, especially when we're talking about, you know, an example would be grenade launchers. The breech-loaded grenade launchers that are overall pretty well performing, the main one being the mountaintop, but the mountaintop is sunsetting. The only ones remaining are going to be the Orwig's Mall and the Truth Teller. Both of those are in the energy slot. And there's a lot of other examples of this, of just energy weapons that are very, very good in PvE, and you need a kinetic primary to account for that. And there honestly isn't that many incredible options, but 600 RPM autos, like, they are really good right now in PvE, because when they got that damage buff, mainly for Crucible reasons... That damage buff is just scaled up in PvE, so they also got a damage buff in PvE as well, and a lot of people overlook that, but seriously, these things are just slapping. I think a lot of people are very obsessed with the idea of a 900 RPM SMG for a good PvE weapon, but I'm not quite there. The Recluse filled that role, but the Recluse is the Recluse. It had the easiest damage bonus to activate out of any weapon in the game. Just get a kill. It didn't even have to be with the Recluse, and it would activate. That was huge for making that thing perform better than most other legendary 900 RPM SMGs will. Like, right now, the Death Adder, people are trying to get that. I think that's not even close to a good enough uh, replacement placement for the recluse and generally these smgs like they perform great up close but without that recluse damage buff they really drop off so i think these fast firing autos very good up close still very very potent up close but can also function way easier in those medium ranges, in those even longer range engagements. They're just so much more versatile. And the fact that the forward path has access to a feeding frenzy multi-kill clip roll, to me, is absolutely insane. I think that's going to be really, really good for a PvE environment. And come next season, being able to use that plus a truth teller or that plus the new Escalation shotgun with a god roll, I think that is actually going to be a pretty common thing you're going to start to see. Because using a great kinetic auto isn't even unprecedented for PvE. Remember the breakneck? That pinnacle gambit weapon was extremely heavily used in a PvE environment. Very, very good weapon. Unfortunately, it got a pretty substantial nerf. And while that was nerfed, its archetype as a whole, of course, has gone up, has gotten buffed. So if you are someone who remembers that fondly, of course, this isn't quite as potent when it was in its prime, but this with Feeding Frenzy multi-kill clip should give you a lot of those same feelings and same experiences. And one more thing that matters for a PvE environment is exotics that have the ability to deal with champions. The Ariana's Vow and the Devil's Ruin and the Divinity, those are all energy weapons. 
So you're going to need a kinetic primary often to go with those, maybe except for the Devil's Ruin. But running Devandi, running the Vow is extremely common within endgame level stuff, Nightfalls, and so on. And again, you're always looking for a great kinetic weapon to run alongside those. And that really does matter when we're assessing this weapon. And so, overall, I don't think this is the new best gun in the game for PvP or anything like that, but I think it performs very well, and I would absolutely be going for not only a PvP role, but also really a PvE role. I think that is where it's kind of going to start shining unexpectedly, and then you're going to kind of realize, oh crap, I should have farmed it a little bit more. Seriously. So that's my thoughts on the matter. That's my thoughts on the forward path. What do you guys think? How is it performing for you? What are your god rolls that you're really liking? Let me know in the comment section down below. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video, found it informative, and if you did, please remember to help me out by simply rating and especially sharing this video. If you guys want to see more Destiny 2 content similar to this, don't be afraid to slap that subscribe button. If you want to get in touch with me and keep up to date with the latest channel activity, the best way is to follow me on Twitter at Rick Kakis. That's linked in the description down below. Again, hope you enjoyed the video and as always, have a good day.